Mount Everest got its name. George Everest was, of course, a British guy <laughs> in charge of an expedition that lasted 70 years with the goal of determining how high the mountain actually is. By the end of the expedition, I think they were only like 30 feet off, so I guess for his reward and place in history, <laughs> the West named the world's greatest mountain after him, but this mountain has had a name long before George Everest. <laughs> Yeah, it's on now. Yeah. 
Over here is good and green. Now, I don't know. I'm, I'm before the start before the rain hit, or were you in it? I'm green. <laughs> <laughs> I've already got my t shirt out. I it was, I think, Nepali badge or something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have whatever I can have that's not a ball. Ball. This one is potatoes. I've had. I had other ones that were like chicken and stuff like that. <coughs> These ones aren't very good. Do you want one? Do you want to try one? So, <laughs> here we are. Welcome to Nepal. Morning of day two, we are in Paking. I believe that's how you say it. We're here at the end of monsoon season. Um, <laughs> and it's monsooning. Hopefully we can get lucky with the weather because um, as of now, I don't even know if we'll be able to see Everest when we make it there in a week's time. But today we're heading to Namche, which is gonna be a pretty tough, pretty tough day. We're with a company called Adventure, the Great Himalaya Treks and Expeditions. So Nanda, our guide, and our porters are, are all supplied to us through that company. It's amazing how, how cheap, <laughs> if you can get here, one of these treks is for all the guides and the meals and the tea house stays cost about 1300 american dollars so it's just it'll take you you know a few days <laughs> but now we're here welcome to nepal
Oh, that's a good looking one. <laughs> My good? I almost wonder if it's like a potato. Yes. Oh, here. Here. So. So here we are again in the town of Namche Bazaar. It is a real bustling <laughs> city built on the side of this mountain. All the trekking clothes that we pay REI a bunch of money for, the Nepalese just have warehouses of it here. So I was wondering why they don't wear ra rain gear they go for the umbrellas. And it turns out that in a monsoon like this, your rain gear does nothing for you. You are, you are getting wet. So I see now why they choose umbrellas over uh, very nice rain gear. The other thing I've noticed so far is all the animals here are the healthiest looking animals I think I've ever seen. Every dog here, is super healthy and that's because the Nepalese believe in karma and they believe in taking care of the animals well will help their karma so actually during COVID um, people made sure to get out and feed the dogs and I think we're here in Namche for two days to get acclimated to the altitude so Hopefully we see a little bit of it because right now we are in the cloud and uh, Eventually we'll get above them
I am beat. Uh, and if you can't tell, I've kind of developed a little bit of a cold. Trying to get over it while I work through this track. You know, at this point in the trip, it's supposed to be all spec spectacular views of the Himalayas and uh, if you can't tell we haven't we haven't really been getting that and I think for some people that might be disappointing but you know it's not it's not for our group it's not for most of the people that we meet on the trail sure I think we'd like to see a few more of the mountains we came here to see but you know it's an experience and uh, when you take trips like this, it's your experience. Like, this experience that I'm having, only I will have. Like, you won't have it. The people that are with me won't have it. Adventure is so personal. If you come and do this same trip, it will not be like what you see in this video. You'll have your own ups and downs and miscues and stuff like that. Um, for us, it's the weather. And you know what? Hell, I'm, I'm enjoying it. <laughs> it's fun to have to try to get above the cloud club or to, to you know, reach our goal. It's almost like we're, we're chasing Everest instead of just having it handed to us. And it's just about relishing the experience that you're given and enjoying it and in a place like this it's, it's really hard not to enjoy it like no matter what happens what what weather you get um it's all beautiful but of course if i come all this way and i don't see everest at all i will be pissed about that <laughs> Dingbo Shea, four, over 14 and a half thousand feet. And as soon as we got here, I've been in bed. It's dinner time now and I am skipping dinner. I have, I'm throwing up. I have diarrhea, headache, <coughs> that cough, chills, and uh, I just feel terrible and I don't know what it is. If it's not the uh, climb that'll get you, it's the uh, it's the bacteria. <laughs> Ugh. Come on, John, pull it together. Well, they haven't evac'd me yet. Um, <laughs> Things got really hairy yesterday. They actually, I was told this morning that our guide Nanda had an evacuation plan in place in case I didn't pull through last night, but I spent 14 hours in this bed 
The altitude is, is no joke here. We're only at 14 and a half thousand feet. I got really lucky. You know, my hubris almost cost me this trip. It wasn't that, it's not that I'm not in shape for this or ill prepared. It's, it's that I think nothing will get me that I can hike as, as fast as I usually do, go as hard as I want and nothing will happen. But, um, that's not the case up here. It's, it's altitude is the great equalizer. I actually read that 50% of trekkers will get some kind of altitude sickness above 13,000 feet. And um, I guess I'm part of that statistic now. This is no joke, this trip. I mean, I thought, I'm, I, I'm gonna be honest, I kind of thought it'd be easy, easier. Um, I kind of thought any guided trip <laughs> would just be easy. I mean, I go into the wilderness alone. How hard could it be going from town to town with a guide and a porter? And um, boy, was I wrong. This is this is this is very hard. This is hard. This is elevation that you won't see. There's germs and bacteria here that you've never experienced. There's altitude like this that no matter how hard you try to train or prepare yourself back where, back at home, unless you you actually live here, you you won't. There's no preparing for it. So definitely, if you do it, uh, have more humility <laughs> than I started this trip with, and and know that these mountains conquer most and better than me, so.
believe the gods live in these mountains. And it makes sense if you want to visit a god that it would take everything in you to get there. In the end, those mountains took one of ours. But as we left and started the four day journey back down to Lukla, I felt like they blessed us with something. With superpowers that only long hard days at high altitudes can give you. With peace, with understanding. I don't know if I'd call the trip fun, <laughs> but satisfying and special, for sure. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.